Thank you, Terry, for reading that scripture from 2 Samuel. And if you have your scriptures handy, there's a one nearby you, or maybe you have it on your, on your phone. Maybe that's been your New Year's resolution, is to read more scripture. And I would say, amen. 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 Read more scripture. I heard last night that there is one amongst us whose mother used to put the Bible on tape by his bedside as he was going to sleep. So by even subconscious intuition, this young man amongst us knows his Bible. And when you ask him, how do you know that? Well, it, it's just in there. It's like ragu, it's just in there, you know. And why did that happen? Because he went to sleep listening to the Word of God. So, parents, I don't know what version you want, what, whether you have cassettes, that's what my dad had, cassettes. Anyone know what a cassette is? Okay. Or CDs, we hardly even know what a CD is. Or you have a phone that has the internet, you can play the scriptures, and you can hear them. And the Bible says that by hearing, we are changed. And so that's why here we are in the service at a moment where we are hearing, hearing the Word of God. Let me just remind you of what the people who don't understand what this is about think of what you are doing right now. They think that it's complete foolishness. I would, I, I, I would hope that you could say, no, it, it's actually helpful. It's actually helpful for me to take time on my Saturday morning to get together with other people who are interested in what God is doing, not only in their own personal lives, but also interested in what he is doing around the world. We talked a little bit about this in our adult Sabbath school lesson. I know that the other Sabbath school is studying a very interesting book right now that is also directing our attention to what God is up to. So if there's any time when you feel that coming to this church does not direct your attention to the God of the universe, please let me know. Please let me know, because that is our intention with these very, very precious moments that we have together on a Sabbath morning. Not only is it because it is Saturday or Shabbat that we do this, it is also because, like the Apostle Paul says, when we gather ourselves together, we, we gather strength from each other because just by being here, you are saying to your brothers and sisters, I believe in God. I believe in not just any God, but I believe in the Creator God who created this world in six days and on the seventh day He rested, or as I like to say, He created Sabbath and gave it as a wedding present to His human family that He had just uh, married on Friday night their first honeymoon night. Can you imagine? Hey, take a break. That's, that's my wedding present to you. Take a break. Have, have a Sabbath. We come to uh, a particular scripture that may be uh, interesting and may be hard at the same time. And the reason I say this is because it is gory. And uh, uh, that should get the attention of all those who like... Uh, 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 movies that maybe have a, a, a protagonist who's going out and trying to write a justice. I, I happen to be a person who, who likes films where there's some terrible thing that has happened and there's a hero who goes out and, and fixes it, you know, because there's so many times in our lives when things happen and, and we just can't fix it, Okay. Uh, you, you have a, a tremendous feeling, at least I'm going to admit to saying that I have a tremendous 
feeling of helplessness when I see certain things going on in our world today, even in our town. I'm going to be very personal and say, in my town, when I see things going on in my town that I would like to think shouldn't be happening, and then I say, well, how can we fix it? And it just doesn't seem to be a way to fix it. You get this, this very helpless, very helpless feeling. So it's really, really kind of nice that in the Bible there are stories like in 2 Samuel uh, chapter 21. Are you ready? Now, I know that we have the kids with us, so I'm going to give you the G-rated version. Are you ready? You're going to read with me 2 Samuel 21 verse 15 once again. All right, so this means it had happened before. Once again, there was a battle between the Philistines and Israel. Now, in our family, we, uh, we like to, uh, you know, think of ourselves as being part of the people of, the modern day part of the people of Israel. And, and I'm just telling you this because I had my brother visit me this week. He is uh, now an executive with IBM and, and uh, he was able to come and see me. And it's very wonderful that he decided to change his flight and, and take a red-eye flight back last night to Washington, D.C., where he lives. But we would talk about the fact that there were, there were the Israelites and the Philipsteins, okay? And, and, and all the Philipsteins were, were the ones who, who were not part of our family. And so here it is that, that Israel is once again at battle with the Philistines. And David went down with his men to fight against the Philistines, and he becomes exhausted. Now, you have seen many movies of, of uh, 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 battles. You've seen aerobics. You've seen uh, football games. Yes, you've been watching. I know you have. All right. And we all have our teams that we hope get there. But you can see sometimes the look on these athletes' faces, the look on these soldiers' faces. It is complete and utter physical exhaustion. And, you know, when you watch films like Gladiator, uh, you know, you've got a sword, and you're swinging back and forward, and you're, well, I guess you're hoping to be vanquishing your enemy. That there are many people that... Find the end of your sword that are not on your team. I mean, this is why we love football so much, the clash of the titans. And yes, it's not with swords or guns. It's on a field, it's on a gridiron, and, and yet at the same time there is as much energy and effort and, and passion put into doing things and then stopping people from doing things, and, and we get all happy when the touchdown happens. Well put those same feelings into the fact that there were people on a field with swords and spears and shields and they were trying to vanquish the other enemy and David is tired, he is exhausted. And Ishbi Benob, one of the descendants of Rapha. Now this is, this is the big guy, okay? Whose bronze spearhead weighed 300 talents, 300 shekels, Let's see, what does the Bible tell us about that? It is, that is about seven and a half pounds. Okay, just the spearhead, just the spearhead, the bronze spearhead on this guy's spear weighed seven and a half pounds. So you must understand, this was not a small man, this was not a small spear. And, you know, in the days of this kind of, of fighting, it would be thought that, you know, one, one quick, phew, from this guy, and, and, and he'd, he'd, he'd just open up your chest, and that would be the end. Uh, he was armed with a new sword, and he said that he would kill David. But Abishai, son of Zeruah, came to David's rescue, and he struck the Philistine down, and he killed him. Then David's men swore to him, saying, never again. Now, this is, these are David's personal bodyguards. They're, 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 they're telling him, David... Never again will you go with us into battle. And here's the key phrase that I want you to get out of this particular piece and what we're going to see in 22 here in a moment. So that the lamp of Israel will not be extinguished. 
you have David's men, his faithful men, saying to him in his exhausted state, look, David, we love you so much that we are not going to take you into this situation again because you have now become a liability to us. We are having to protect you instead of you being part of the advancing army. We are not wanting to see you extinguished because you are our leader. You are the one who who is representing us. You are the one who excites us about being part of Israel. You are the one that God has sent to us. In the course of time, there was another battle in the Philistines at Gob. This is verse 18. And at that time, uh, Sibachai, the Hushathite, killed Saph, again, one of the descendants of Rapha. And it goes on to say that there were four descendants of Rapha, that were extinguished by various faithful men of David. The last of which, if you read down in uh, verse 22, was a guy named Goliath. I did not know until rereading this chapter that there was yet another. There was Goliath of Gath, and then there was also Goliath, the son of Rapha, And in fact, he was one of these guys with six fingers and six toes. 24. The Bible is very clear about that in verse 20. When he taunted Israel, Jonathan, son of Shemaiah, David's brother. So Jonathan, David's nephew, steps up. And takes this guy out. Now why is this important as we're talking about love here in the beginning part of 2020? Last week, you know, we should love generously. Today, we should love faithfully. And here we're talking about a battle scene and we're talking about men who are, are loving David faithfully because he has loved them. He has set an example for them and he has loved them faithfully. But it, 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 it's strange. So as I was thinking about how this matches up with our situation, I think to myself, well, God is faithful. So I'm going to ask, maybe this is a, a strange thing to do, but uh, is, is anyone going to just raise their hand and say, God is faithful and this is how he's faithful? Is there anyone who would like to just say, I think God is faithful because... God is faithful to me. Let me make it personal. God is faithful to me because he has given me an incredibly wonderful wife. And our faithfulness has been a reflection of God's faithfulness to us as we have shown that to each other. Okay? Anyone else with an idea? God is faithful like David's men were faithful to him because he has Answered prayers, prayers like, protect us as we go to see our friends over Christmas and and New Year's. And hey, look, (laughs) the the wizards are back. Amen. 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 Did you go halfway around the world? Yes. Did you float on a big boat? Yes. Did it not sink? Amen. Our prayers were answered, especially her, especially mom's. Because mom's the one who works for the company that owns the boat, and she was sure, sure glad the boat didn't have any problems. See? God is, God is faithful to us now, like he has been faithful in the past, like in these battle situations, which we could all say, look, I've got battle situations in my life too, right? I've got situations where, where I am being attacked by the Philipsteins. A friend of mine works for an organization that supports the Adventist church known as Adventist Frontier Missions, and he reports that over Christmas they released a video that talks about how to deal with individuals who are exhibiting signs of demon possession. Now, you'd say... 
why do they think that that is their business as the frontier mission people? Well, they are seeing, not just in far distant lands, but they are seeing a huge increase in the number of people that their missionaries are coming into contact with who are demon-possessed. And they're trying to teach their people how to deal with these very frontal attacks that are coming on. And as they release this video, they have now been starting to tabulate the number of instances where people in their office have had attempts on their life. So you can't tell me that the story of David and his men fighting the sons of Rapha and the other Philistines that were the major enemies of Israel that represented those who did not believe, those who were in the control and under the, the influence of the evil one. You cannot tell me that this is not happening in our day right here, right now in this country because I believe that it is. It's not behind the guise of entertainment, although that many of us know the, 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 the difficulties that come from being connected to the entertainment world and all that kind of thing. And we talk about not watching as much and all that kind of thing. Or we talk about reading our Bibles more. Why? Because we know that there are various ways in which we are being attacked. And that our faithfulness to God is being undermined. Well, I'm just letting you know that the gloves are off. 2020, be aware that you will need to step up your connection to the Holy Spirit and to His agenda for your life because the gloves are off. People are being attacked. People are being looked at for execution because they are participating in the family of God. Now, Adventist Frontier Missions deals with individuals who live in countries where if you change religion, your family may be the ones who will execute you. Okay, so, so uh, uh, again, we, we, we live here in beautiful Santa Clarita. We don't hear, these, we, we don't hear this on the hometown station, okay? But it does exist in the United States where individuals from other parts of the world have come to live in our fair country and still practice some of the barbaric practices that come along with their idea of uh, holiness and religion towards God. So don't think, don't think that just by being in these United States that we are exempt from these situations, these attacks that exist around the world and also within our shores. It is happening. And we can today, we are focusing on the fact that God is faithful. God is, as, as was said, uh, merciful. God is merciful to have brought us this far, to have forgiven us for our lack of trust in him. And, have, and it says to us, please keep going forward. I am going to continue to be faithful to you. You please be faithful to me. David sings a song. Uh, this is now Samuel, 2 Samuel 22. He sang a song to the Lord in the words of his song, when, they, when the Lord delivered him from the hand of his enemies. Okay, so this is a song I'm hoping we all can sing. And it's, a very, it's got some very interesting parts. So I'm just going to read it quickly. And, and, and then point out some of the, the parts that just jump out at me. The Lord is my rock. Don't you love that? Okay. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. There are songs that are being written even now, Christian contemporary songs, and, 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 and these songs come to mind when I read this kind of stuff, and it's likely that the people who wrote those songs were reading this. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold, 
my refuge and my savior from violent men, you save me, God. I will call on the Lord who is worthy of praise, and I am saved from my enemies. Now, I just want to put a little parenthesis in here and say, guess what? In the midst of temptation, God has promised us a way out. So if you want to sing this song that he saved you, when he gives you that out in the midst of temptation, in the midst of, of the onslaught of the evil in this world, know that if you want to sing this song, you need to take that out. Take the out. I call on the Lord who is worthy of praise, and I am saved from my enemies. The waves of death swirled about me. The torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of the grave coiled around me. The snare of death uh, confronted me. You, time and time again, I have said to you, this is the valley of the shadow of death, and it's not just because of the Santa Clarita Valley. It's not just because the San Fernando Valley isn't the valley of the shadow of death. It is that we live on this planet where death hangs over us. Yes, I had a strange experience. I'm visiting yesterday, and it is in a home where people go to be cared for. And as I'm looking out the window, there goes two people with a stretcher and a black bag. She died at 12.35 yesterday afternoon. Old? Yes. Ready? Yes. Cared for? Loved? Yes. But dead? Yes. It's part of our reality. Is not that what we look forward to? That we look forward to the day in which death will be thrown into the lake of fire? Yes, and the death will not be a part of our existence anymore. But until then, David sings songs like, The cords of the grave coiled around me, the snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I called out to my God. From, the t- from his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came to his ears. Folks, he hears us. Please never Never believe the lie that he doesn't hear your prayers. There are some, I think, very harsh people who want to tell you that if such and such and such and such is going on in your life, that God doesn't hear your prayers. Please, read the word of God when he says through David, who is prophetically talking to you here and now about his own experience with God. God hears. He hears from his temple. The earth trembled and quaked. This is is getting, getting to the good part here. You ready? The foundations of the heavens shook. They trembled because he was angry. Oh, this is a picture of God. He's now being prayed for, for, for help and strength. Smoke rose from his nostrils, consuming fire came from his mouth, burning coals blazed. He parted the heavens and came down. He mounted the cherubim. Are you, are you getting excited? I'm getting excited. This, this is God coming to the aid of his people. He mounted the cherubim and flew. He soared on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his canopy around him in the dark rain clouds of the sky. Out of the brightness of his presence, bolts of lightning blazed forth. <clears throat> I don't know about you, but this, this, this is exciting stuff. The Lord thundered from heaven. The voice of the Most High resounded. He shot arrows and scattered enemies, bolts of lightning, and routed them. The valleys and the seas were exposed. The foundations of the earth laid bare. Now, this is, this is not only exciting, but this is terrifying. This is, this, is, this, is, this is terrifying stuff. And, you know, he reached down from the high and took hold of me, and he drew me up out of the deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemy, from my foes, who were too many and too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out of the spacious into a spacious place and rescued me because he delighted in me. The Lord has dealt with me here. This is David. Can you can you sing this song with David? This is a very interesting part. Are you ready? The Lord has dealt with me according to my righteousness. 
According to the cleanness of my hands, he has rewarded me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord. Is that not something that we can come and exalt in? And I would say because of the power of the Holy Spirit in us that we can sing this song. I have not done evil by turning from God. All, the laws are be- all his laws are before me and I have not turned away from his decrees. I have been blameless. 2020 is here, folks. 2020 is here. Are you going to be able to sing this song? I have been blameless before him and have kept myself from sin. The Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness. This is David talking about, according to my cleanliness in his sight. Here we go. To the faithful, you show yourself faithful. This is David talking to God. To the blameless, you show yourself blameless. To the poor, pure, you show yourself pure. But, but to the crooked, you show yourself shrewd. You save the humble, but your eyes are on the haughty, the haughty, and you bring them low. Here's the text that matches up with what David's men said about him. This is now David saying the same thing about God. You are my lamp. O Lord, the Lord turns my darkness into light. With your help, I can advance against a troop. With my God, I can scale a wall. He's speaking in military terms here. He's, he's, he's speaking in this, in, in, in this language of, of, of fighting with the Philistines. But I'm wanting you to appropriate that. I'm wanting you to take that language and, and personalize it and, and be able to sing that song with David, sing that song to say, my God helps me with the difficulties that I am confronted with in this modern age in 2020. I think, he, I, I, think I, I want to be able to sing that song in 2020. What do you, what do you say? That he has been faithful to me and I have been faithful to him. For who is God beside the Lord and who is the rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and, and this is now uh, again something we should not take for granted, he's the one who gives us the strength. He's the one, David said, who makes my way perfect. We sang the song earlier, Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. I'm just wondering how many of us this year would like to be able to sing the song back to God, I I have been faithful to you. I have been faithful to you because you are my lamp. You are my light. You are the one who has made my pathway clear. You are the one who has protected and blessed Great is thy faithfulness, O God, but are we going to hear back the echo from our Heavenly Father? My strength, my faithfulness has also been in you, and you are faithful as a result to me. May your 2020 be a time when you can say that you have indeed loved faithfully. Amen.